The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. So settle back in your easy chairs and enjoy another delightful half hour with all the Nelsons. Ozzie Nelson, of course, plays the part of the head of the Nelson household, Ozzie. And here is his lovely wife, Harriet Nelson, who keeps the family on an even keel. Hello, Harriet. The smiling young teenager we now see is David Nelson, older of the two Nelson boys and played by David Nelson. And here we have the youngest of the Nelsons, the little guy with the twinkle in his eye, Ricky Nelson, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Mr. Thornberry, better known as Ozzie's pal Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. This year they're going to try and give the kids some practical experience. Yeah, that's a good idea. A lot of the parents are going to take part. And they're going to act out various things and give the kids a chance to solve some typical civic problems. You know, sort of surprise them. Oh, yeah. Hey, maybe this might be a good opportunity for you and me to apply for a marriage license. Oh, no. My mother warned me against hasty decisions. <laughs> You know, come to think of it, it's funny they didn't ask me to participate. Well, maybe they have enough volunteers. Well, I know, but after all, David's one of the winners. I should think they'd have the, the dads taking part in the thing. Oh, I think he'll do all right by himself. Oh, yeah. I, I, I hope so. What do you mean? Well, frankly, I'd feel a little more confident if he had a better beginning to his, his theme. Something like, Friends, Americans, Countrymen. <laughs> Today, old pal. Well, you don't exactly look glum yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an everyday a man can become the father of a top city official. Oh, you heard about it. Well, thanks a lot, Thorny. <laughs> thanks a lot, Thorny. Should be congratulations, Thorny. Happens that I'm Will's father, but I, I'm David's father. Well, now there's a lot of startling information. <laughs> uh, evidently, you haven't heard. Uh, you know, they've had this contest for a civics day. Well, David's theme has been selected as one of the winners. Ah, I have a secret for you. Will's theme has been accepted, too. Oh, oh, well, gee, that, that's, that's very nice. <laughs> well, I think it's very nice for David, too. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, thank you. <laughs> I guess the kids are going to be in competition with each other for the same job, you know, the theme that selected the, the best one, that boy becomes the, the mayor. I know, uh, yeah. David's theme is awful good. Oz, old boy, I hate to disillusion you, but I know for a fact Will's theme's going to win first prize. What makes you so sure? I wrote it. <laughs> you wrote Will's theme? It wasn't Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Funny what an underhanded thing to do. Oh, what's wrong with doing a little homework for your boy? Well, helping him with his homework is one thing, but in a case like this, he's supposed to win or lose on his own merit. Now, just a second before you get so high and mighty, I happen to know that you helped David with his theme, too. Well, that's where you're wrong. I made a few suggestions, but David threw out everything I wrote. He's going to become mayor or judge or whatever it is, strictly on his own merits. Well, it may interest you to know that Will threw out everything I wrote, too. That's the kind of integrity my boy has. Honest Will Thornberry. Well, I guess that puts us right back where we started. Exactly, Oz, with Will becoming mayor. Now, just a second, Thorny. How can somebody who's usually fairly intelligent be so completely unreasonable about a small thing? Oz, if I was a little more reasonable, I wouldn't spend my time talking to such an unreasonable... Then, wait a minute. You mean me? I'm unreasonable? Oz, That's you should end. become a public official yourself. A commissioner of public shouting. Who's shouting? Well, it's certainly not me. Well, what makes you say I'm shouting? He goes, I can't even hear my own self shout. Jack! <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, I was making such a big thing out of this when Will and David are such good friends. Oh, I know it, Thorny. Uh, I am positive that David's going to end up with one of the top jobs. Oh, gee, thanks, Thorny. Now, now, that's reasonable for the first time. Certainly, certainly. How could he miss, Oz? Being a friend of Mayor Will Thornberry's. <laughs> Noisy Thornberry. 
tries to convince everybody his son, Will, is going to be mayor today. Well, I hope he's still friends. Well, not when I last saw him. Well, you better make up then, because Mrs. Pennyfeather just called, and she wants you and Thorny to take part in the Civic State program together. Oh, no, that's impossible. Not with Thorny. I told you, we're mad at each other. Well, postpone being mad at each other until tomorrow. <laughs> Miss Ake, how can you possibly postpone being mad at somebody? Besides, that wouldn't work anyway. He and I are going bowling tomorrow. Well, now, that sounds pretty silly if you ask me. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll make arrangements to have Thorny come over here and apologize to me and admit that he's childish and unreasonable and the whole thing is his fault, then I'll go through with the PTA deal for you. I've got a better idea. Why don't you go over to Thorny's and apologize to him? Well, I would, except for one thing. What's that? Well, it so happens that I'm childish and unreasonable, too. <laughs> that you'd be willing to go through with this if Thorny came over here and apologized? Well, yes. Yeah, I, I said that. Oh, fine. Well, it's all settled then. You mean Thorny's coming over here? Yeah, I was talking to Catherine Thornberry on the phone a little while ago, and she said that Thorny wanted to come over and make up. Was this his idea, or was it Catherine's? Oh, it was all Thorny's idea. Catherine simply mentioned that if he didn't make up, she wouldn't cook him any dinner tonight. <laughs> Any chance have you and Catherine been conspiring against us? Well, Mrs. Hatfield and Mrs. McCoy decided we'd better do something before the shooting started. Well, if Thorny is willing to meet me halfway, I'll go along with the idea. But only because I figure the kids need us. Fair enough. Ordinarily, I wouldn't interfere in these matters. No, uh, that's okay. I, I know you figure you did it for my own good. Oh, I did. Wouldn't be good for you to go hungry tonight. <laughs> I thought there was some catch to this. Oh, there's your neighbor bringing the peace pipe. Well, okay, you answer the door and tell Thorny that as long as he's willing to come over here and apologize, I'll go along with the thing. Oh, no. Big Chief sign a own treaty. I'll answer the door, and that's all. Hi, Thorny. Well, come on in. Thanks. Nelson, Mr. Thornberry, Mr. Thornberry, Mr. Nelson. Thorny, Ozzy, Ozzy, Thorny. Well, I'll leave you two magpies to talk over old times. I understand we're supposed to shake hands. Yeah, I guess so, Oz. <laughs> uh, I guess it was kind of a silly argument, that Thorny. <laughs> Certainly not worth losing a good friend over. <laughs> or a good dinner. <laughs> and I want you to know I think your boy, Will, would make an excellent mayor. Well, Oz, I know David would. May the best man win. May the best man. <laughs> <laughs> Better man. <laughs> Come on and sit down, Thorny. Uh, take my favorite chair. Thanks, Oz. Now, it's just once in a while, you understand, you have a little tendency to lose your temper. Well, I suppose I do. Uh, you don't mind my saying this? Well, no. No, of course not. And, and you see, it's when you lose your temper that that you get so darn unreasonable. See, uh, only only because you've lost your, your temper, you see. Well, unreasonable? Yeah, yes. As I say, it, it's, it, look, now, you don't mind my uh, making this little suggestion, do you? Well, Oz, not at all. Good. Because I think it's in the spirit of friendship and <laughs> cooperation. Well, Oz, if you don't mind, as long as you think this way, there's something I'd like to suggest. Go right ahead. It's about that stubborn streak you have every once in a while. Stubborn? Oz, you may not realize it, but you can be pretty bullheaded about some things. Bullheaded? Yes, bullheaded. Look, Thorny, I'll admit we don't see eye to eye on certain things at times, but calling me stubborn and bullheaded, that's putting it pretty strong. Well, just because I don't agree with you on every little thing doesn't make me unreasonable. 
Well, it was just said to you as a friendly criticism. And I was giving you some friendly criticism. What kind of a friendly criticism is that, calling a man stubborn and, and thick-headed? I said bullheaded, but thick-headed's even better. <laughs> Just a moment. I refuse to stay here and be called a lot of names. I can always eat out tonight. <laughs> bullheaded? Oh, when I'm bullheaded. <laughs> Have you heard anything about David yet? No, sir. There's nothing in this paper either. You think they'll make him mayor? Well, I sure hope so. I think he's got a good chance. Golly, I suppose I'll have to stop calling him names like Muttonhead if they do. <laughs> Probably have to start calling him his honor, the Muttonhead. <laughs> Rick, I don't think you ought to call your brother names anyway. Heck, you should hear what he calls me. Well, nevertheless, name calling is very childish. Even though some grown-ups indulge in it, like that muttonhead Thornberry. Ozzie, what's going on over to Thornberry? I'm sure I wouldn't know, Harriet. Why? Well, there's a policeman over there on the front porch. Come look. A policeman? Holy smokes, you're right. He's got Mr. Thornberry by the arm. For goodness sakes. Hey, this looks serious. How come you're worried about Mr. Thornberry? Well, we have our disagreements, but I don't want to see him get mixed up with the law. And look, Pa, Mr. Thornberry's pointing at our house now. Yeah. What's he doing that for? Oh, boy, he's bringing the policeman over here. <laughs> you better not try to drag me into this. I haven't done anything. Here they come. Hey, this is neat, huh? It's probably just some misunderstanding. I don't know. That policeman looks like he means business. Harriet. Harriet? Fine thing, leave me alone at a time like this. I'm here, Pop. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, son. Uh... Uh, Mr. Nelson? Uh, uh, yes, my, my name is Nelson. It's Rodney Nelson. Uh, uh, how do you spell that first name? O Z Z I E. Are you Ozzy Nelson? Uh, uh, well, I, I'm uh, one of the Ozzy Nelsons in town. Yes, sir, officer. This is the man. <laughs> Barney! Goodness sakes, I never thought you'd be a stool pigeon. <laughs> what seems to be the, the trouble, officer? I have orders to place you under arrest. Arrest? What's the charge? Disturbing the peace and creating a public nuisance. It says here that it happened in your backyard this morning. Oh, that! <laughs> well, that was just a friendly little discussion between my neighbor and me. Only partly, officer. I was being friendly. Mr. Nelson here was shouting his unreasonable head off. Well, you were shouting, too. Well, I'm not worried, Oz. I confess. <laughs> just a second, Thorny. You're in this just as deep as I am. In but out soon, Oz. Officer, tell him who signed the warrant. Well, the chief of police signed it. Chief Will Thornberry. <laughs> Uh, Will is chief of police for today? See, Oz, I have family connections. <laughs> you both have to come with me. But, but officer, I, I'm an innocent man. You can't take me in. I think you'd better go with them, dear. Oh, uh, uh, Harriet, uh, can't you do something uh, about this? Yes, of course I can. I'll get in the car and follow you down there. <laughs> uh, okay, officer, I'm ready. Be All right, gentlemen, sit right there. Say, it's a pretty classy police station. Happens to be the municipal courtroom. The judge will be here in a moment. Where's the chief of police? I wouldn't know about that. I had orders to bring you here immediately. I guess the judge is going to settle your case in a hurry. I demand to have a trial by the chief of police. <laughs> these are the men? Yeah, these are the two. All right, well, stand up. What, what, what's this? <laughs> oh, now, this is going too far. Their names? Nelson and Thornberry. Thanks. Sit down. Now, now, just a second. Don't you print those in the paper. Sit down, please, Mr. Nelson. This is an absolute outrage. My congressman's going to hear about this. <laughs> 
Come right in here, please, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, thank you. Oh, how are you? Hello, Barney. How are you? Step out the corridor and watch for the judge, please. Yes, sir, right away. Did you see the way that guy ordered the policeman around? Yeah, I, I, I noticed that. Must be somebody important. What do you think we ought to do now? We'll do what any law-abiding citizen does under the circumstances. Check the window and see how far it is to the ground. All right, please. His honorary honor, Judge David Nelson. <laughs> well, how about that? Everybody, please rise. David? The defendant will please be quiet. Uh, it, it's all right, officer. The judge is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> officer, see there's some water in here, please. Yes, sir. The defendant will please sit down. <laughs> friend. I think I used to bounce him on my knee. Oh, what's the charge, officer? Uh, the defendants, uh, Mr. Nelson and Mr. Thornberry, are charged with disturbing the peace and creating a public nuisance. Well, who are the complaining witnesses in the case? Uh, Mrs. Harriet Nelson, Ricky Nelson. Harriet and, and Ricky? <laughs> A fine, loyal family you have. Order. Order in the court. Officer, please see that the defendants don't interrupt again. Yes, sir. Now, what were the names of the complaining witnesses in the case? Uh, Mrs. Harriet Nelson, Ricky Nelson, and a Mrs. Thornberry, who is absent. What were you saying? Step lively, boys. We'll keep his honor waiting. Uh, how do the defendants plead to these charges? Uh, I plead not guilty, David. Uh, Your Honor? Well, I'm certainly not guilty, sir. Oh, I see. Now, Mr. Nelson, will you please give the court your version of the story? Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. I was over in the, my backyard, uh, minding my own business, when uh, my neighbor, Mr. Thornberry, came over and started this discussion. And it went along friendly lines for a while, and all of a sudden, he started shouting at me. I shouted at him. He shouted at me. Then he shouted at me again. He shouted at me. He shouted at me. He shouted at me. And that's the way it went for 10 minutes. <laughs> May I point out that the law is sometimes more lenient with a person who admits his guilt? And therefore, if you and Mr. Thornbury would change your plea to guilty... Uh, 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 Your Honor, may we have a, a slight conference? Uh, certainly. What do you think? Uh, leave this to me. <clears throat> Sir... Your Honor, I demand a writ of habeas corpus. What's that? I don't know, but it sounds good. Uh, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Thornberry would like to plead guilty. Uh, we'd both like to plead guilty, Your Honor. Well, since you're both first offenders, I'm inclined to be lenient. Well, uh, uh, you'll never regret this, son. Uh, uh, Your Honor? You're a fine boy, Your Honor. And therefore, it is the decision of this court that you should be both sentenced to 30 days. <laughs> 30 days of shaking hands twice a day. She got off easy that time. <laughs> My hand won't stop shaking for 30 days. <laughs> Very good, David. You've done a wonderful job as judge, and I think your decision in this case is just what was needed. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Jackson. Funny, that guy is the mayor. Oh, Oz, don't be silly. He's too old to be in high school. <laughs> The real mayor. Mrs. Nelson, you ought to be congratulated, too. You staged the trial beautifully. Oh, thank you, Mayor Jackson. Of course, I couldn't possibly have done it without the cooperation of my husband, Mr. Thornberry. Evidently, this whole thing is a joke. No. Gentlemen, I've Mayor watched Harry... a lot of parents take part in the city's day, but none of them has ever given half the performance you did today. Oh, well, you certainly lived your well. Life. Thank you very oh, much. Hey, Mayor. Mayor. Yes, I introduce myself. I'm Mrs. Penny Feather, and this is our committee from the PTA. Oh, well, how do you do, oh, ladies? Do. You were just wonderful. No. Oh, it was so <laughs> thrilling. You looked absolutely frightened, <laughs> Mrs. Thornberry. Oh, well, Mr. Thornberry's a wonderful actor. <laughs> well, thank you. And you were so convincing, Mr. Nelson. Well, I'm a wonderful... I, I mean... <laughs> How about another picture, gentlemen? Oh, fine. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, here, uh, have a cigar. Uh, you'll make much. sure these get in the paper, won't you? You bet. I want it for lunch. Thank you. Mm -hmm.